So first thing we want to do is we want to think about, you know, when we hit this button, the text is going to change and the image is going to change. Well, let's just focus on the imaging changing right now, right? Um, <clears throat> so always focus on the low hanging fruit. So this is fine. So we're going to do some light coding in order to get this to work. OK, it's really light scripting. And if you guys follow along, I think you'll be OK. So first thing we want to do, we're, in there, we're going to create a new script. And we can either do it in the assets folder here or we can do it in our in the assets folder here. I usually just come right here in this window. I right click and I go to create. And from there, I go to uh, C sharp script. And I'm going to click on that. And if you see down here, it has opened up, uh, it, it has made this C sharp script called new behavior. And if you look over here, now if I have the C sharp script selected, it's gonna show me over here what's in the script. But we can't edit here. Um, so we'll need to use an editor and you can use Monodev, you can use Visual Studio. I'll put a link to those two at the bottom. Monodev used to come with uh, Unity. They changed it to Visual, but I think in this new download, when I was paying attention, it was Mono. So not a big deal. Uh, we can use either one. Um, so the first we want to do is we want to rename this. I don't want it to be called New Behavior Script. Uh, since this is going to be a, a script that's associated with my, my button, I'm just going to call it button logic underscore logic and enter as we see it renamed that and while I'm at it I'm just going to go ahead and create a folder uh, called scripts we may only have one script but if we have more at least we have a folder for them I'm going to drag this guy to my script folder just some light housekeeping that's all then double click in the script and now if I double click on the C sharp script, it's going to automatically open to the editor that Unity is associated with. So let's double click that. And it is opening Monodev. We can see that here. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail of computer science. Um, there's a lot of resources on the web on best coding practices and some rules. I'm just going to be doing more script work in this so the people who don't know programming as well can still follow along. Uh, don't feel like you have to know all the ins and outs of this. Uh, but yeah, so what I'm doing right now is this is just a personal preference. When I code, I, I like to make sure my brackets line up. It, it's easier for me to read. Your hardcore programmers will probably disagree with me, uh, but this is how I learned how to program. So. I'm not going to go into detail on what classes are. There's plenty of resources online to tell you what classes are, what functions are. Just know that when you have something that looks like this, it can be public. So it can be public void or void. Um, this is a function. This is also a function. This declares a class. So a class is kind of like an object. And within that object, uh, you, you can name it whatever you want. It didn't rename my script usually this would be named whatever the name of your CS class is but it didn't rename it so I'm gonna rename it here if it didn't rename it for you guys go ahead and rename it there and we'll go ahead and we'll we'll, we'll save all so we go to file save all double click on unity you'll see the wheel down here turning and once it's done turning you can you can click on your console you don't have any errors but we'll come back to that later because I just want to do that really fast okay so uh, just know these are your using statements and these are uh, different libraries and code that Unity can point to. And we may need to use these, but right now, just make sure you have the using Unity engine, using system.collections.generic and using system.collections. Uh, we will be using a new another one though uh, for the UI. So, um, so we'll have to do that. But before we get there, let's just look at this. So we have a class, like I said, that is your base class for your CS file. You can have more than one class in a CS file, but we're not going to do that. Um, that's a little more advanced than this tutorial is going to talk about. Just know that we created button, button, button logic. Make sure you spell that properly. And it's going to be inheriting from Monodev. Don't worry about inheritance, though. If you want to find out more about it, I urge you to go and Google inheritance and polymorphism. Those are two really key computer science terms. That if you are start if you do start scripting or coding a little bit, 
it's good to know those. But for this, you don't really need to know it. Just know that this is what this should look like when you first open up uh, your your C sharp script file that you that you created. Okay, Unity automatically gives you the start function. It automatically gives you an update and even lets you know what these are used for. This you use this for uh, initialize initialization, and this is called once per frame. So roughly 60 times a second. If your frame rate drops, just know that this is only getting called as many times as your frame is, is being rendered. So roughly 60 times a second. You can use update for pretty much everything that we're gonna do. I'm not gonna go into more advanced um, updates. There's a, there's a fixed update as well, but we're not gonna talk about those, but feel free to go Google that on your own if you wanna know more about it. So we have all these things here, fantastic. So what we'll do is you need to know that when you create a script in C Sharp and you save it, so, uh, and, and you save it and it goes back into your world, that C Sharp script needs to be attached to something that's running in the world. Otherwise, that script will never get compiled uh, during runtime or when it's getting built. Uh, it'll never be included in the build and it will not know to be, uh, to be called at all. So, since this is going to be running every time we run the program, we're going to go ahead and do that now. So again, if you haven't made those changes that I made, uh, make those, change this to button logic, make sure it says button logic. We're going to file, save all, go back to Unity. You'll see the little wheel here at the bottom right. It lets you know it's compiling. And then if you have any errors in this console window that I clicked on, here's project, here's console. You're, you will have error messages like one here, one there, one here, and we'll probably see some of those later, um, but they'll give you warnings and, and also uh, errors. Warnings aren't that bad. Errors, your project will not run with errors. Just know that. So now that we have this, so let's go back to project. Now that we have this C Sharp script ready, we're just gonna go ahead and drag it up and put it on something that's always gonna live in the world. So for instance, I know that Canvas is probably always gonna live in my world. So I'm gonna grab this C-sharp script and I'm just gonna drag it up to Canvas. And it shows up here. So if I click Canvas, you'll see in my inspector that it showed up right here. Now, another thing I can do, let me go ahead and right click that and I'm gonna remove component. Another way you can get the C-sharp script from here over to here is if you make sure in your hierarchy here, you click Canvas and you have it open in your inspector right here. Then you can uh, press and hold the mouse over the button logic script, drag it over here and let go. That's another way you can put your script. So you can dr drag things from here over to here all day, every day. Now, even another way you could do it. Let's remove this component. Let's go to did it remove it? Remove component. We can see this button. So if we have canvas picked here and we're over here in the inspector, we can go down, we can hit add component. And here's all these different things we can add, which is another good way to add components. And, and I urge you to go through and, and um, play with these too. But we go to component. If we look at this thing called scripts, I wonder if I hit that, will it show the scripts I've made? And look, it has all the scripts that are in my, that are, part of my project. We don't see these because these were given to us as part of Unity, but we do have this button logic here that we created. So we can click that and that here is the same script as right here. Okay. So, so we see button logic. We know it's attached. Now, if we go back to our editor, so we're going to click on Monodev at the bottom. Anytime I make a change to any of this and it compiles, it's going to reflect over here in Unity. So let's click on Monodev. Now, uh, let's get back to what the button does. So whenever, what I want it to do is anytime this button is clicked, okay, I want it to change the text. So what I like to do, there's a couple of different ways to do it, but for, the, for this tutorial to keep it simple, I'm just gonna write uh, one function. So we're going to, I'm gonna enter a couple of times. See where my cursor was, I entered, and I'm gonna say public void 
And the reason we use void, by the way, uh, you can Google this, but it's just uh, a way, if I write public void in the name of my function, that's gonna be a type of function that doesn't return a value when it's called. So we're not gonna return a value, we're just running another set of code, right? So public void, then I'm gonna call this uh, button press, because that's what we're doing. Again, you can call this whatever you like, and I can't type button press, and this is important, make sure you have your opening and closed uh, parentheses. And then we do our open bracket and close bracket. So now we have this beautiful function, there's nothing inside of it yet, so it's not really gonna do anything, but uh, one way to test to make sure that this piece of code can get called is we can print to our console screen that we showed earlier, and that's what I'm gonna do first, just to give you guys a. Uh, a taste to know how you can you can test this out as you're coding. What we need to do now is, is so we want to print uh, just make sure that every time this button is pressed that we're going to print to the uh, the console that it was pressed. So what we're going to do is we're going to the easiest way. There's two different ways you can do this. You can do a print statement or a debug dot log statement. We're going to do uh, the print statement for now, just for easiness. So print. Uh, and then you can use your arrow keys to pick one. So if I hit print, I can print that, hit that. Open, um, open parentheses, open quotation. And we're gonna put this button, button was pressed. Okay, we're gonna end our quotation. We're gonna end our parentheses. And the most important line, the piece of the line of your code is the semicolon. This causes a lot of headache because after every line of code in C Sharp, you have to write a semicolon. Uh, you might be asking why we didn't write a semicolon up here. But I said that was at the beginning of a function. You don't, this whole piece needs to be called. So this isn't a regular line of code. This is just, I mean, it is a line of code, but this is for your function where this is more a, a line of code that does a certain task. Know that we need that semicolon there. Uh, so now, if I save this and run it, when I hit uh, hit the button, everything, every time we hit it, this should be printed to our console. Let's go ahead and file. We're going to save all. Go here. Make sure we see the circle. Do we get any errors? Let's hit on our console. No errors. So this is where every line, every time we hit the button, it should say this button was pressed. This button was pressed. This button was pressed. All right, so to test that, let's go up here. We're going to make this a little bit bigger. Let's hit our play button. And some of you may know what may happen now. If I hit the button, but wait, nothing's being, nothing's being shown right here in the console. Huh. Oh, yeah. Don't forget, guys. When you hit, when you make this button, it's not in... Um, it doesn't know to print because we have the button here and you're saying, well, Josh, this is uh, this is there. It should work. Yeah, we told it to print console every time the button was hit, but we didn't link this up to our button. Yeah, this this uh, script is living in the world, but it's not receiving a message from the button because it doesn't know how. This is how you do it. So make sure you have, we're at Canvas right now. Uh, we're gonna um, left click on the button. We're gonna go here. See this, every button has a thing right here. It says on click. This gets called all the time uh, while the program's running and it's just waiting. It's listening for when that button gets pressed, but we have to link up a function for it first. So the, if you wanna link the function up to this on click, we're gonna hit this plus symbol here and it's looking for an object. So every time this button gets clicked, it's gonna run whatever we tell it. So we have to find the object that the code is attached to. And if you remember, we attached that C-sharp code to this canvas object. So let's, let's uh, press and hold down the mouse on the canvas in our hierarchy, and we're gonna drag it over to right here where it says object. So now it's on the canvas. So now if we pull down this, we can look, oh look, the canvas has the button logic script. And in the button logic script, we have a function that we called button press. So if I click that, now 
this is all linked together. So now when I run the program, it should do what we asked it to do. So let's go ahead and make sure our console is open by clicking the console there. We're going to go to the top. We're going to hit play. Now let's see what happens when I click the button. Oh, look. Look down on the, on the bottom left where the console is. Every time I click that button, now it will print to the screen this button was pressed. So we know that we have successfully linked a function to our button. And I think that's fantastic. So I think I'm going to break the tutorial up. So in our first tutorial, so in this tutorial, we created, uh, we, we started our workflow. We introduced the UI, pulling in a new uh, a UI element to our scene. We pulled in an image element to our scene and we pulled in a button to our scene and we successfully wrote our first line of code, which is to print to our console here that the button was pressed every time we clicked it. So in the next tutorial, we're going to explore how we can actually make this text change with a button click. And then further down the road, we will discuss how we can change this image element here as well. All right, guys, thanks. And if you want, uh, go ahead and go to the next tutorial and I'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Bye.